And hey, if if we can't if we can't do it with just doing regular activity, then we must um, raise consciousness through any means necessary. When police terrorism, when when it get to the point where they're killing children, when they're killing unarmed women, when they're killing unarmed men, and they're killing unarmed elderly folks, and and everybody know it. And the grand juries refuse to indict. Exactly. <laughs> you know, so you know it's systematic, Horrible. it's institutional. Yeah. Also, you know, it's it's terrorism. We we look at it no difference how France looked at the gunmen. You know, when you when we see a police officer in our community, we immediately get scared. You get tightened up. You you, you can't breathe. You're adrenaline, and, and and you could be as innocent as I don't know what, but just due to the fact that you know you're a young man um, and someone in hip hop culture, it automatically makes you. Guilty. I mean, even just as a young white man in mm -hmm. hip hop culture, you know, it, it's not just the black people that's experiencing it. You know, we experience it more at an alarming rate. But it, it's across the board. Right. But one thing I noticed is media, they pick and choose the cases they bring attention to. That's true. Cases that are somewhat questionable, mm -hmm. like uh, like Mike Brown, for example, because mm -hmm. they have him on um, camera stealing um, cigars, right. uh, supposedly, right. uh, allegedly stealing cigars. You know, that's the that's the case that. You know, gets all the media attention. That's in CNN, MSNBC, twenty four seven. But the the cases where it's just clear, outright, blatant murder, you know, um, it it doesn't get played. You know, like for example, I noticed when police terrorism happened to somebody that's white. You know, um, some of the things that the white community says is, "Hey, why media is not covering this? Why is media is not covering this?" Well, we obviously know that the thing is, they want to make this thing seem like police versus black people. Right. They're not being truthful how police terrorize white people. I remember a case in California happened about two or three years ago. An yeah. elderly um, white lady was driving on the freeway, on the highway in California, and and she pulled over. And, and the police officer eventually saw her and pulled behind her and asked her, you know, was she okay? And she said, I'm fine. I, I don't need your help. But he continued to assist to ask her questions and things of that nature. And he eventually came to the point where he wanted her to get out of her car and she refused to. And he tased her and killed her. And it was an 80 year old something white lady, you yeah, know? Nice. And what they used to justify that was that she had TAC in her system. Right, of course. That was probable cause for her death. Same with Sandra Bland. Oh, she had THC in her system. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's that's why she killed herself in the jail because she had THC right. in her system. Of course. Right. Tell me about the the merging of the uh, GMF with the Black New Black Panther Party here in Dallas to form the Huey Gun Club. Can can you speak a little about um, yes. the Huey? I mean the the New Black Panthers, their relationship or the difference between the new Black Panthers and the original Black Panthers and then there's also the new African right. Panthers, right? There's like a couple of different Panther organizations and you right. got a regional difference. What What's unique about the Texas chapter of the new Black Panthers? And well, for one, I don't know if you know, but back in 89, the new Black Panthers started here in Dallas, Texas. Mm -hmm. You know, which is the organization is national and, and I've even heard there was uh, possibly international mm -hmm. but they started here in Dallas Texas in 89 and one thing about the group that's here in Dallas and here in Texas um, they, they are a little bit different than the national group um, they they maintain you know the roots from when it started from 89 versus um, some of the groups that went on to Atlanta mm -hmm. and other places um, also, some of the things that are different is, you know, they, they, they did have a separation. And so, you know, the, 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 the party that's here in Dallas is called the mm. People's New Black Panther Party. Okay. And so that's who we in solidarity with. You nice. know, what are some of the immediate objectives 
that are that you see as like realistic let's say right in the right. in the next election next five years four mm -hmm. or five years like what what do you think are some of the objectives that are reasonable that you already have maybe some traction with mm -hmm. well one one of the things that we're most one of the most important things to us is building a culture mm -hmm. okay uh, we want to build a culture within the black community of self-defense right of, of knowing your rights for its guns knowing um, gun knowledge um, not just we just don't want people um, black people to have guns we want responsible black people to have guns that will um, um, act responsible um, also our goal is to build a stronger culture of through activity of having um, shooting training um, not only just training, but um, eventually we can move to the form of friendly competition. You know, like they have three gun competition and things of that nature where, you know, black people could feel comfortable, um, you know, doing things that we have viewed as white from previously. Um, also, the goal is to build um, black training institutions um, outside the Huey P. Newton Gun Club, forest businesses, you know, ranges, private property, mm. uh, where we can go teach people how to shoot, hunt, trap, fish, um, survival concepts, mm. you know, um, just like in Hurricane Katrina. Mm. Um, if we would have had a Huey P. Newton Gun Club and Hurricane Katrina, we could have saved a lot more people. Um, number one, so many people have dehydrated. Uh, we one thing we do in the Huey P. Newton Gun Club, we understand how to purify our water, you know, primitively. Um, also, um, we also understand how to start fire without um, lighter and matches, things of that nature, you know, to keep warm or to cook food or to purify water with um, with, with fire. Basic um, survival skills. Exactly, how to build shelter, mm -hmm. you know, how to go trap small game mm -hmm. you know how to do uh, fish with very um, little to limited resources you know things like that those are the stuff that we're promoting you know um, and and two we're, we're trying to get people to not be so um, dependent on you know the police department you mm -hmm. know that's the whole point of having guns and things in nature to when something happened to the community the community could deal with it internally yeah you know I found I was I was I found the uh, the Vice article mm -hmm. uh, was really informative. There was a lot of good information in the Vice article, and I found that uh, one of the things that's kind of interesting is, you know, uh, the police chief um, David Brown. David Brown. So David Brown. I found it interesting. Okay, well Dallas has a black police chief, and then I learned in that article that Dallas also has uh, a, a black DA. Mm -hmm. And yet, there's still. Well, this... actually, is we have a white DA currently right now, Susan Hawk. Okay, so the but the one that just came out of office. Yeah, this is Attorney Craig Watkins, and, Craig and Watkins. he was there for a while. Right. So, so I found an interesting one in his. He gave support to the organization uh, in I guess his article or in one of the statements he made about the Huey Gun Club about you know you guys are what you guys are doing is perfectly. 100% legal uh, within your constitutional rights, within mm -hmm. the state rights of Texas, all that sort of stuff. And then I didn't know that the police chief, his son, was killed mm -hmm. in 2010 in a police-related shooting incident. Yes, police terrorism. And then there was a couple of town meetings that were called, and yet the article just pointed out it's still black and brown people are getting killed at like 29 times the rate of... Right white people being mm -hmm. killed by police right so what do you think I mean what what does that say about kind of the complexity of the system when some white folks are say well Dallas has a black police chief like you know what why you know like and uh, and they support the Huey Gun Club like what what is what what, is, what does it mean what's the indictment of the, of the system I guess if you will when you talk about institutional racism mm -hmm. that even within an environment of a black police chief and a black president mm -hmm. whereas Zayed Malik point out was, oh you're in America what your black people are free you know all, all of this is long in the past like what do you think is why don't so many people get it I and mean, we've talked about the media obviously the media picks and chooses how it's cases but right. what, but what is it institutionally that is is so rotten to the core it seems 
that black and brown men and particularly youth are being killed at such alarming rates and mm -hmm. even when the black police chief we can't get this violence under control why why is that well one is is it's for the propaganda you know um but, but, you know they they constantly discredit us in that same media that they um portray the um police um killings in you know <laughs> when you think about you know Prior to Mike Brown and all that, you think about shows like First 48, mm -hmm. how it pretty much make young black men and women or brown um, men and women dehumanized and seem like just savage killers. And inherently you know? more violent. Exactly. You know, especially when a lot of the cases, somebody would die over pity, you know, differences. You know, so people watch that stuff, and in and, and, and their mind, they see this guy with a t-shirt, baggy pants, Timberland boots, whatever. And so, you know, let's say hypothetically speaking, when they're at the mall and they see somebody dressed similar to that, they, they admire, oh, he's a killer just like him. I need to watch my purse. I need to make sure this person go a totally different direction. You know, uh, mass media has a, a lot to do with the propaganda, how they present us, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, websites like World Star Hip Hop has mm -hmm. a lot to do with that, you yes. know. They, 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 they constantly show a whole bunch, show us in Street violent. fights and mm -hmm. just constant. The yeah. Along, and you know, along with um, this new corporate hip hop, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, they, they promote guys like Chief Key, guys, you know, who really don't have no real message and it's just destructive, you know, cultural suicide uh, music. Yeah. You know, so that's how I, and today, you know, we can get gunned down um, in front of 50 cameras, unarmed, you know, innocent, and people would still play semantics on Fox News yeah. where you innocent or right. did you deserve to die?